Film effects. You don't have a, you know, hoppy logger. You have a 40. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's uh, There's so many br bands that have done the 40 type of thing. Hey, YouTube, we're live. Uh, myself and Chet are here. Good day, Chet. Hey, doing good. Good, good. Uh, what are you drinking today, Chet? Absolutely not a damn thing. Hold on. Wait, I actually am. Never mind. Uh, I'm drinking nice, uh, great value, pur purified drinking water. <laughs> oh, oh, your new name is Big E. <laughs> you and the York get along great. Uh, I'm drinking Plan B Brewery's Phantom Iris, which is their oat pale ale. Ooh. I've heard of that brewery before. I think it was like, yeah, I think I remember seeing it on one of your videos. Yes, uh, I've done a bunch of videos with them involved. Uh, and then they, well, this is the, this is the fifth beer I've had since they technically reopened Though They say they didn't close, even though they said they closed on their, on their website. Um, so, uh, the original, the original two owners split and one of the owners left and he was also the brewmaster at the time. Then the next brewmaster left. And now the, uh, the lone owner that's left is brewing the beers there. So I've had five beers there now since he started brewing. This is the weakest of the five that I've had. Still don't mind it. It's not a bad beer. It's just of the five beers that were available. It's the the weakest of them for me, me personally. Uh, hello to whoever is viewing us right now. Uh, we have our news stories open. Uh, we're probably going to have other people join in as usual. If you guys want to join us, you are more than welcome to. You just have to get a hold of me so I can get you the link. Uh, there we go. Chat windows open all the way. And uh, let's let's turn off my camera and start talking. Let's talk start talking now. Uh, Chet gave me some American news to talk about later, but we do have some Canadian stuff to talk about first. Oh, that we do. Why isn't it letting you in? Why isn't it letting you in, Brian? Are you using a cell phone? Give me one second, Brian. So, for those of you that don't know this trick, okay, if if somebody's trying to join your hangout, we'll we'll do this before we start getting into this. So, if somebody's joining your hangout. And they're using a cell phone. You do need to go into uh, you do need to go into Google Hangouts on your phone, and you click that call, and you go to People, and then under People you see this thing that says Join by Link, and you click Join by Link, and then you say Got it. And now anybody that's on a cell phone that just clicks the link can join. Cheers, fuckers. Cheers to you, Mister. So there you go. There, there was my impromptu little little show on how to get in if you're on a cell phone. Oh, there's a uh, a different way on a cell phone. Well, yeah. The thing is, right? And here, since you weren't here, here we go. <laughs> okay. you, you need a cell phone of your own when you do this. Okay, so you you need to be in the chat. You need to be the guy that guy that started the chat. You need to go to Google Hangouts. You need to click on the chat you're in. Okay. Okay, once you're in the chat you're in, you have to click up here to the little dots, go to people, and then right here it'll say joining by link, and you have to uh, you have to swipe that to on. I think the first time I joined, I did it by my phone, and I was half drunk, and I somehow managed to do it. It's because I already had that swiped. Because somebody else had joined by their phone. Yeah. And I'm still getting Facebook messages. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, tomorrow I'm going to a bar crawl. <laughs> oh, so uh, so yeah, we'll we'll talk about this too quick. Um, so last Friday was was last Friday was Project Brew. Mm -hmm. Um, Project Brew is a great time and all. Uh, I went with Brendan. I introduced him to a bunch of people. Um. And yeah, so you were having the exact problem I thought you were having, Brian. There you go. Uh, so anyway, back to back to this great story here. So I went with Brendan, and we had a great time. I introduced him to a bunch of people in the brewing industry, and blah 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 blah. blah. Um, we went to an after party. After after the event, we went to an after party. The event actually sold out of beer. There was only one guy left, and he had two cans of beer when I when I walked away, and there was still ten minutes left. Uh, so they ran out of beer. They had to give people money back. Um, but there was an after party. We went to the after party. Then we went to the after after party. Where was the after party held? The after party was Plan B. Then the next after party was uh, was Merchant Ale House, and then the after 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 party was Fiddler's Elbow. 
well fiddlers on uh fiddlers on uh fiddlers poor house on saint paul yeah so uh i went to fiddlers last uh so i went to the after party the after after party and then the after 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 party um i don't know how i got home the last person i can find that remembers talking to me was at 12 p.m well no yeah like 12 p.m about 11 45 like midnight yeah right around midnight sorry 12 a.m so the last person that can remember talking to me was was one of the brewers from the college one of the one of the professors last person i talked to was probably george and George is like, yeah, you okay. left at midnight. The next person I can find that knows where I was was the salesperson at 7-Eleven who says I walked in at 5 a.m. So I think I walked home. <laughs> I think I walked home from St. Catharines to Niagara Falls. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it happened. Would something like that take five hours? <laughs> I mean, that is a pretty yeah, long yeah. walk. It, it takes, I've done it before. It takes about five hours. Well, maybe... Uh... Maybe some like a uh, lady from Welland like picked you up. No, no, you off lady, at a no <laughs> lady from Welland picked me up. No lady from Welland picked me up. <laughs> one second here. Uh, so we do got to get to our, our beer news. I do have one more thing I have to do here. I'm going to turn off my camera. Uh, because there's two people now bitching at me. Uh, <laughs> uh, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, b -b -b bang Uh, no. What are you guys drinking tonight? I was drinking uh, Great Value Purified Drinking Water. Nice. Are you going to yes. wash that down with some of that apricot brandy from a few weeks ago? Uh, I'm not touching it. Good. I'm, sa I'm saving my I'm saving my uh, stuff for tomorrow. <laughs> Your apricot brandy? <laughs> if I can find it, I lost it. <laughs> it's in my room somewhere, but... Uh, but no, I just see it. Literally, it was like, I think it was actually like last, yeah, it was last Thursday where I drank all my stuff. <laughs> Sucks coming to the end of, the, of supply, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny because usually like uh, Chad here likes to have the BDUs when I don't have beer. Oh, yeah, blame, blame me. Blame me. That's that's the way everybody does everything. <laughs> that's Chad's fault. Oh, well. It's always been Chad's fault. It's okay. I understand. Yeah, that's all right. I just need to stockpile more. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I've, uh, I'm just down to homebrew at this point. I uh, didn't even bother going to the liquor store today, so... Yeah, if I wasn't saving up for this bar crawl, I would totally uh, buy like a fermenting uh, bucket, so that way I could like um, uh, make some dandelion wine because like uh, the dandelions are starting to pop up. Usually, like around like May sixth is when you want to you know start bucket <laughs> bucking up. Like you're you're dead serious, like. Dandelion wine. Yeah. How do you make that? Oh, uh, look it up. With dandelions. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah but <laughs> is that you take you pluck the flower, water, water, dandelion, sugar, some fucking wine yeast, and away you go. Yeah, and uh, usually lemon juice or something like that to make it, you know, to put acid into it. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, that's really it. It's basically making out. You basically make uh, daddy lying tea, L N U. <laughs> add what you need to add to make it into alcohol. Yeah. yeah add your sugar, add your yeast. Oh my god, we see Brian. We actually see Brian. You actually see Brian. 
That's not Brian. Brian's always chugging a uh, Stella Artois. I know. Where's your Stella Artois? <laughs> I drank it. Finally, it took you like how many, how many months? <laughs> that picture was from two years ago. I've been drinking that beer for three years. <laughs> What's going on, Malted in Montreal? Oh, thank you for that, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, you're sp drinking Spice Tree from Compass Box. I've never had that. Cheers, Starscream. Uh, yeah, and uh, Starscream informed me earlier that you can still get X Fusion, X rated Fusion liqueur, the pink liqueur, if you really wanted it. It's still out there. We have a second human. <laughs> what? Two humans. Hello. Oh, shit. What the fuck's going on over there? There's two humans on a video screen. <laughs> I actually move, and there's another human. I know. I'm, I'm used to just seeing this. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The pinky's in the air. He oh, it does. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't drink it now. They apparently they have glass in it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not down for drinking glass. That was only two runs. That was only two runs of it. You you'd be safe. I don't. I don't want to risk it though. Yeah, like if he wanted to drink glass, he would be you know drinking natty. My next <laughs> beer will be Butcher Fest beer. My beer is actually empty right now. Well, mine. Tina's actually drinking beer. Tina, what the fuck are you doing? You can't drink beer. Uh, it's the only beer that I can drink. Johnny Simcoe. Ah, yes, the uh, gluten-reduced one from GLB. Omission is uh, gluten-free, but it tastes like shit. Yep. <laughs> that, was, that was a good thumbs up right there, too. What about that Glutenberg stuff? How's that? I've never tried it. Shit. It's shit. Okay. Uh, that's sort of what I would assume it was going to be like. Oh, we still haven't tried the, the what was the it? Stout. Wouldn't, right. uh, wouldn't Budweiser technically be low in gluten since it's mainly fucking rice? It's just rice and corn. <laughs> actually, I, I, do know, I do know a few people that actually are able to drink Bud Light because it's 51% rice, but not, not all that many. It actually is not totally gluten free though. I did. Oh, little, I know. You know that they damn. use dried malt extract in it. Ah, uh, damn it. Yeah. Uh, what do we got going on over here? Let's uh, let's let's quickly read some beer news. Let's quickly read some beer news. We'll be we'll on the beer news. Oh, sorry. I just had beer go right up my nose. That was awesome. <laughs> Delicious. Oh, it was. It was. Um, I'm not going to read that. Nobody cares about that. I don't even care about that. I don't what care. Is that? That. What if I care? You don't care. <laughs> you don't care. Uh, Catapult Brewing is launching its first brand in Toronto. Catapult Brewing. They're launching an American Pale Ale. Ooh, launching. Tap at several bars in East Toronto. An official launch will take place Saturday, April 28th. At Please tell Stoss, me this. Uh, one, uh, 1376 Danforth Avenue, starting at 4 p.m. Free brand, branded glassware for the first 50 customers. Wow. It has a catapult on it. It's really cool. It's an American Please. pale ale. It's going to sell so well with the millions of other American pale ales there. All the American pale ales. Please tell me that when they meet by launching it, they're actually launching it with, with a catapult. That, that, would, that would be amazing. <laughs> it's like, hopefully you catch your glassware, guys. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> uh, Kilter Brewing is installing a prototype system at One Great City Brewing in, in Manitoba. Winnipeg, Manitoba, Kilter Brewing has announced uh, some unexpected roadblocks have led to delaying in taking possession of the building in Winnipeg's West Broadway, Wolseley neighborhood, where it plans to open later this year. But in the meantime, another local brewery will be providing space for Kilter to work on its beers. 
Thanks to a partnership with One Great City Brewing, Kilter will be setting up a prototype brewing system where it will be creating small batch beers in order to experiment with different yeast varieties, hop blends, and a number of other ingredients to thoroughly analyze the nuances given. Sounds bougie. <laughs> I know, right? Eh? Um, now, Ashley, remember that story you told me about uh, about Niagara College? Yes. So I went to Project Brew, and uh, I went up to a guy, and he hands me his beer, and he goes, "This is my beer. It, it we aged it with uh, with Brett." And I just started laughing because <laughs> I knew it was him. <laughs> I, I he looked at me, and he goes, "What?" I go, "You know what?" And he's like, "Oh, oh, okay. that's hilarious." Uh, uh, how was it though? Because I was joking. The, the, the beer, the beer wasn't worth making people stay up all night boiling everything at the brewery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was joking with that guy, you know, and uh, I was like, oh, I really hope it turns out to be a good beer because otherwise it'd be really shitty. <laughs> no, it, it, it was, it, it, yeah. <laughs> Brett. Well, there, there's a rule at the college that you're not supposed to use Brett. And uh, one of the students used Brett and then canned his beer and didn't tell anybody he canned his beer with Brett. And then they canned a bunch of other beer. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then they found out, and and yeah. I'm assuming it's all the same. Why can't they uh, do it with uh, Brett? Because Brett takes over your brewery; it just it goes everywhere. Yeah. That's yeah. Funk Lab. It's the Nickel Brooks Funk Lab yeah. because Brett has taken over everything. Yeah, that, that's why they had to buy a new brewery because they can't make their normal beers anymore. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Nick. Hello, Hello Nicholas. Mr. Nicholas. Mm -hmm. What's up? So, Humble Beginnings Brewing is holding its official grand opening this weekend. Humble Beginnings Brewing is in Ingerside, Ingleside, sorry, Ontario. Two months after opening a soft launch, Humble Beginnings Brewing has announced that it will be holding a grand opening this weekend. Located at 25 Thorold Lane in Ingleside, a small community near Cornwall in eastern Ontario, Humble Beginnings will be welcoming guests to come and celebrate on Saturday, April 28th, starting at 11 a.m. Several beers will be available by the glass and in growlers, and details will be announced for a special seasonal release coming out next month. So, what else do we have? A contract brewing facility equals, equals brewing opening next month in London, Ontario. So another thing much like the... Uh, much like, uh, well, the common good beer people. Not the common. Is it common good? Yeah, common good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's a bunch of them now opening up. And it's, it's breweries that are opening up and then renting out their space, basically. There's no real brewery there. They just are a contract facility. And anybody that's contracting can go there. Interesting. When are you, when are you going down there? Never. When, 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 are, you, when are you setting up, uh, Ash? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so, brewing will be overseen by Justin McKellar, a former Labatt Breweries employee, with client breweries welcome to have their own brewers on hand to be involved in the production. Oh, so they're, they're, going, they're going full-on contract brewery where you don't even brew it yourself. They brew it for you. You have to give them your recipe. I got recipes. I bet you do, sir. I bet you do. I even got normal ones now. Normal ones? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm brewing like... normal things. Hey, uh, Windsor, Nova Scotia is getting a new brewery. They're getting, uh, well, there's Bent Ridge Winery and Bent Nail Brewery are opening up. Windsor is their tagline going to be Get Bent? Can I go to New Brunswick? Right. Probably. It, I, I would hope so. I would hope that would be their tagline. Doesn't New Brunswick have some sort of stupid new rule now that you can't bring beer from other provinces or the states in there? Um, little less. Well, I mean, not as long, only if it's. Oh shit! What what's going on is I uh, mean, and I imagine Chad's going to read this in the Canadian Beer News is that um, a lot of like brewery outlets that, that have so far been able to sell beers from uh, uh, other breweries in New Brunswick. Thought that they were able to sell beers and stuff from Nova Scotia as well as uh, other maritime provinces, um, but NB Liquor just came down after this um, this Supreme Court ruling that was that went through last week, 
and it said, nope, you're only supposed to be selling uh, uh, New Brunswick craft beers at these locations. That's always been the rule, yada, yada, yada. So they uh, so they're, 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 uh, they're restricting um, sales to NB only brew beers at the craft brewery, uh, at, at, at craft brewery outlets, like at Picaroons. But at the NB liquor stores, they sell whatever they want, like Ontario beers, Quebec beers, BC beers, Nova Scotia, PEI beers, wherever, whatever you got. But as long as it's all shit that's approved by NB Liquor and craft beer outlets like the breweries, like microbreweries who sell other breweries beers, can only sell New Brunswick beers, which is stupid. So if I go through the states and end up going to New Brunswick, my beer is not going to be jacked at the border. Oh, it's going to, well, they're not going to steal it, but they're going to make you pay a duty on it. I don't care. I'll pay duty on it. You yeah, drink yeah. New Brunswick beer and you like it. <laughs> Here's some good New Brunswick beer. See, I'm doing, doing yeah. Treehouse Main Brewing and uh, Bissell Brothers. I better not get, get confiscated. Because you're going to bring me from New Brunswick to. You're going to Maine, I'm assuming. Driving through Maine, yes. You're coming up through New Brunswick? Well, you gotta cut, you got to go through the states and then up through New Brunswick and then into like PEI and all that. And then drive back through Canada through Quebec. Hmm. Okay, I see where you're going. You're you're kind of going through Maine and then going to BEI. Yeah. Gotcha. Talking about the Maritimes, Land Wash Brewing is opening later this year in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. What a name. Mount Pearl, Newfoundland. A pair of Newfoundland-born brewers have recently moved back to the province, and by recently, they mean uh, a year ago, after several years <laughs> away, and have teamed up with a third partner and announced plans to open a brewery in the city of Mount Pearl later this year. Landwash Brewery is being established by Chris, Christina Cody and Chris Conway, previously the founding brewers at Folly Brew Pub in Toronto, and Jennifer Dufresne, a project management expert with two decades of experience. So you know what she was. She was the cash. Um... Set to be located at 181 Commonwealth Avenue in Mount Pearl, Landwash will feature a 15-barrel brewing system, a tap room, a retail store selling cans and growlers. According to a press release, the beers will trend towards modern American craft styles with some Belgian influences, which will also include some barrel-aged beers and sour beers as the brewery develops. And which I, I think I think that's amazingly, amazingly, amazingly overestimating the population of Newfoundland from what I've had so far from there. I don't like the name. Land wash almost sounds too much like backwash. <clears throat> womp womp. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> you'll, drink, you'll drink Newfoundland beer and you'll like it. Well, I, you gotta wonder though, in Newfoundland, like how many small breweries are there there's not that right. many small breweries and the ones that are there aren't really all that adventurous from what i've seen and been told yeah. probably more than none of it or yukon well, uh, 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 there's a lot more than none of it that's true yeah. i think there's one in none of it isn't there uh, uh yeah, i think one opened one up none of it. yeah but i think the biggest one from no from newfoundland is kitty vitty yep but i know there's others too Oh, interesting. Can you go none of it now just to try their beer? Mm. Right. Uh, Moosehead Breweries reveals redesigned packaging for their core brands and talk about having a blueberry Rattler this year. Oh, hey. fuck, another blueberry. Come on. <laughs> fuck with the blueberry. I'm, like, oh, I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. And you're like, oh, fuck. fuck. No, I'm poo pooing all over blueberry beers, man. I've, I've, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm just, I'm not lie, I just finished a blueberry beer. Was it from uh, Forgotten Island or whatever it is? Or no, it was from Block Three. It was uh, oh, okay. raspberry blueberry barrel aged and red wine barrel farmhouse. Sounds very complex. Sorry to hijack the conversation there, Chad. My no apologies. Worries. No I'm worries. Passionate about the anti blueberries. About the anti blueberries. All righty. Last thing we'll talk about for the CBNs, and then we'll get back to the comments, have some chats between ourselves, and get back to some news. But uh, Stonehammer Brewing has reportedly shut down for good. Wow. In Guelph, Ontario, Ontario beer writer Ben Johnson reports on Ben's beer blog that Guelph's Stonehammer Brewing has closed down after more than two decades of business. While no official announcement has been made by the brewery, 
Dante says, sources have confirmed that last week employees were told to head home and ask not to return and that production of beer had ceased permanently. Stonehammer was formed in 1995 by Rich Fortram and Charles McLean, McLean being of McLean's Brewing, uh, under the under the name F&M Brewing and has been owned since 2015 by Philip and Leslie Woodhouse, who changed the name to match the branding of the brewery's core beer lineup. Uh, further details will be reported to CBN as more information becomes available. Nothing's been available yet. I even went and talked to somebody that's related to them to see what happened, and he won't give me any information. Although he did tell me he now has to find a new place to contract brew because he was contract brewing his beer out of there. Oh, shit. Can you guess what his brewery was named? Mm, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. There, there's, there's a... There's a brewery where the owner's name is the same name as his last name, and his last name is the same as the two owners of this brewery's last name. Oh, McLean's. No. What? Woodhouse. Oh, Woodhouse. Oh. Oh. So that's okay. Now it makes sense. <laughs> Woodhouse of the Ice Cream <laughs> and Pilsner beer labels, and <laughs> they had beer at the end of their, all yeah. their names. Awesome. Light beer, stout beer, lager beer. Uh, so what do you have going on over here in the in the chats? Uh, Malted was talking to Chet. Chet, you're looking hippier than usual. Uh, Matt DRP, what's up? Just got off work. About to open a growler of cranberry sour from Folding Mountain Brewery. Andrew Watts, I'm drinking Barking Squirrel. Hey, Albino, see you in Cambridge in July. Yes, sir, I'm excited. Uh, Glutenberg is great for Malted in Montreal uh, for, uh, for gluten-free beers. He enjoys their stouts. Uh, Gutenberg. Uh, Maple Rusky's around. Good day, Maple Rusky. Why aren't you in here, motherfucker? Uh, Ashley <laughs> Sexton says hello to them all. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, East East Coast Legends. Uh, good Sandlot reference there, Chet. Uh, all we get in the NSLC is Picaroons and Pump House and a limited quality variety. I doubt any brewers here carry much different in their store. More New Brunswick's lost than ours. Suck at New Brunswick from from the king, well former king of YouTube, beer tube. Yeah, yeah, uh, dildo Stout, Newfie beers. Uh, well, we're starting, we're, sorry, I was going to say something about getting New Nova Scotia beer. We're starting to get more stuff from like Boxing Rock and uh, uh, Big Spruce and Two Crows and Good Robot here, and I was getting excited. Uh, what do we have? Uh, Lee Russell saw saw a moose blueberry rattler in the NSLC today. Oh, Jesus. Uh, malt, um, malt master. Salud, gentlemen. Good day to you, Sage. Uh, and Ashley, uh, Lee will send you a blueberry rattler if you want it. I will gladly drink it, and I would appreciate the effort. I can't guarantee I'll enjoy it. With fresh blueberries in it. <laughs> yes. I'm going to see if I can get it here. I, I would hope you could get it there. You know, you are yeah, well, it's brewed here. What the? It, fuck? Yeah, it's supposed to be brewed there, so I would hope you can get it. I would okay, hope. yeah. Actually, I got a good look at the uh, the updated packaging for it. They've they've updated the. Uh, here, I'll show a picture of it here. The Moosehead Blueberry Rattler. Of course, it's got blueberries on the can. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and uh, the watermelon Rattler right here. Oh, watermelon. Yeah, you can see right down below. Right down below here, you can see what the old packaging looked like. Although I think Ontario gets the got that before. Did you get? Didn't you? Yeah, yeah. They're they're doing a great job of picking fruits that don't translate well into beer. So kudos to them. Oh, wow. Wow. Last year's watermelon was terrible. Like for for a Rattler. I mean, Boxer watermelon's not bad. I was gonna say, can't be any from Boxer watermelon. Boxer watermelon was good, okay? It tasted yeah. like a watermelon Jolly Rancher. It was a Jolly Rancher. It's just all... It was like the toys. only only good thing I've ever had from fucking Boxer. Wait, I thought you guys said it had like a natural watermelon taste and not a Jolly Rancher. I don't even remember what I said anymore. <laughs> all, I know is it's, all I know is it's the only fucking beer from them that I, I actually enjoyed. I'm drinking In the Palms next from Green and Grit instead of Green and Grist as a I always call them. Was, was that light, lemon that's, rattler? That's the session one, right? Uh, this is the. It just says IPA on it, but it's only five percent. Okay. Was that our field trip beer? That was our field trip, yeah. I drank all my field trip beer except that was my last one. 
I'm, that was I'm my pretty, last field trip beer. I'm pretty Apparently, sure the field that, trip beer was on the week of for me. So when, when's our next field trip, motherfuckers? I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. We have to decide on the location and figure out some time. My my Thursdays aren't so hot anymore, so. Your Thursdays aren't so hot anymore. No, I mean I'm off today, but that's only because I had to take a vacation day. So, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. no daycare for the little guys, so can't leave them alone in the house running around. So, we'll figure someone's got to watch them. Mm. We'll figure out a day. We will figure Where's out the a city day. Where's from? Ash, it's uh, is it Hamilton or is it? I'm in Welland. I'm in Welland. I'm right, Welland. Why is it not that far away? Yeah, I mean, and both of these guys are in Niagara Falls, so it's not that far away. It's like 25 minutes yeah. for me. So, hey, both of us guys, there's <laughs> there's a woman in the room now too. <laughs> Barely, ignore me. Yeah, yeah. Stop, stop using curse words like Welland around here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't use the dirty words. Like dirty words like well. <laughs> But getting back to Moosehead, is isn't Moosehead launching a separate brewery where they're going to be doing more craft style stuff? Wasn't I mean, that in? Eh, they yeah, said they were building one. I don't know if they actually did. I don't know what's going on with that. To be honest, like yeah, I'm, I'm from where Moosehead's from. They were planning on brew on uh, building a brewery. They had a, a spot selected to actually build this brewery, and then all that plans went through. Then I think it was last year they came up and they said, "Yeah, we're gonna build a craft beer room and build it inside the uh, the main uh, like the main storefront for the uh, for the brewery. Like they have oh. like a brewery store. They don't sell beer in this brewery store right now, but they're planning on opening a craft beer bar there. Interesting. So probably that's what I think's going on. Huh. But I mean, I has I haven't heard any update uh, for that for for months now. You know how many of these stupid fucking shirts I own now, Sage? You know how many of these stupid shirts I own? Oh, fuck. Why isn't Sage in here? I was out yesterday in a pineapple shirt. I was out the day before in a banana shirt. I have a strawberry shirt, too. I'm waiting. I'm still waiting for my romper. (laughs) It should be here tomorrow, hopefully. Please tell me it's the jungle one. No, no. Those ones are too expensive. I got the single colored ones now. Uh, maybe if I have an extra hundred bucks to waste for nothing, I'll I'll buy one of the jungle ones. All right. What you should do, you should walk around with the pineapple shirt with the uh, yellow tartan. Like yellow that, that, that could work. That could work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so basically the next the next time I get paid from Google, I might buy one of the expensive uh because the Google money I just use for stupid shit. I might buy the expensive romper. I I still I still say <laughs> I still say that you know what I'm. What I'm, one of the things I'm going to do is my next first date. I'm going to wear the romper, and if she stays, <laughs> she's a keeper. Well, I, she, I was saying this to Boychuck, and Boychuck's like, "No, if she stays, you get the fuck out of there." But she's crazy. <laughs> you know she's a keep. You know she's a keeper if she changes your diaper for you. Oh my god. Okay, Greg. <laughs> yeah, seriously. When did you pick up the Greg torch? Oh my god. <laughs> Somebody's got to. He's not here. Oh, Apparently, man. he's out with six horny women tonight. Ooh, sounds fun. Where are the guys? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do we have going on over here in the in the uh, chatty chatty chat room? Uh, before we go on to our next story. Uh, well, actually, first, before we go on to the chat room, what's everybody drinking now? Let's start with Nick. Nick, what are you drinking currently? Yeah, I am drinking. Okay, lost that can. I think it's a Muskoka Craft Lager. Nothing you exciting. Don't, you don't even know what you're fucking drinking. Yeah, let's go cook craft lager. Well, I threw the can away. <laughs> you threw the can. Uh, how about yourself, Chet? You're up next. Absolutely nothing since I drank all my water. <laughs> See, that's even worse. Because <laughs> again, moisture from the air around. Because again, Chet has to have these things when I have no beer. <laughs> I'm sure you have apricot brandy somewhere. Somewhere. But on the tenth not here, so it's not the same without having him harass me about it. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Leisure Suit Couch Boy, you're up next. Couch Boy, uh Oh, here we go. I am drinking salted caramel stout. There you go. Salted caramel stout. From whom? So where's that from? 
Self Live Brewing, St. Louis, Missouri. Is it Budweiser? (laughs) Actually, have like legitimate craft breweries in St. Louis. Amazing. It's called Anheuser and Bush. I uh, I have an empty glass right now, but I'm about to go fill it with some homebrew. Uh, Nice. Maybe a table beer, maybe a nut brown. I don't know. We'll, oh, we'll see what's going on. I'm not brown, eh? I've got something here that'll beat uh, the uh, the apricot brandy. Oh yes, you. Oh yes, the uh, maple Northern rub. Comfort. Oh. Northern comfort. Barrel aged maple syrup and uh, and rum. Comfort. Or ba- yeah, ma- barrel aged rum with maple syrup. There's there's such thing as Northern comfort. It should be Northern there, hostility. There, <laughs> yeah, Northern hostility. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we have here? Uh, so from from Sage Chad, I dig your Don Cherry tribute chemise, and he's drinking Guinness Draft Stout. Uh, Lydia, BDU, BDU, BDU. Uh, Sage again. Soon you'll be making boring comments on CBC next to Don himself. Uh, oh, hey Nick, just noticed you in here, buddy. Thanks for noticing. He doesn't seem to care that you're around. I mean, he just yeah. noticed you. Just just noticed. Af- I'm just an afterthought around here. <laughs> I'm well, more curious why you're not in here there, Sage. Do you have the label on that one? On on mine? Do you have the label? Uh, I got a, a label on it. It's uh, Brewdog Elvis juice, but uh, that's not what's inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> Labels. Yeah, I've uh, peel off labels. It's actually your homemade popcorn Kolsch. Oh god, fuck! No, actually, oh. I just I just had to grab my IPA. Ah, cool. There we go. Get drunk faster. So this this is something that was shared to me by by Chet himself, and it's happening in Austin, Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Richmond, Virginia, uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, Philly, Pennsylvania, and. Uh, there's a camp Brockton, that's in Ohio somewhere. Brockton, MA. MA is Maine, right? No, MA is Massachusetts. MA is Massachusetts. Yeah. Massachusetts. Anyway, this is this is Noah Fex's Punk in Drublick, which is a uh, music festival, beer festival. Craft Thornville, beer. Ohio is where they have like the actual camp. <laughs> so, sorry. Right, so, uh, so the first okay. one... Uh, well, what do we have? We have May 6th, May 12th, uh, May 13th, May 19th, and May 20th. Uh, the camp is uh, June 1st to 3rd? Yep. All right. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of cool, you know? No effects if you like them. If you like... You know, what do we even have? Like, uh, what do we have up here? Oh, you have, you have to go to each one, eh? Each one is different. They'll have a different lineup. I don't care. I don't care enough to do all that. What do we have here? Bad, bad religion, mad caddies, interrupters, bad cop, bad cop, no effects. What year uh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, at the camp, which is like the big one, it says no effects, rancid, Pennywise, the mighty, mighty boss tones, be so first to the gimme gimmies. Five. Goldfinger, uh, sick of it all, lag wagon. I haven't heard lag wagon in fucking years. Fuck. The, the bouncing souls. I think it was like '94 when I last heard them. Again, oh, Mad no. gutter mouth, gutter face, face. Jello Biafra, and the Guantam- and, and the uh, Guantanamo School of Medicine. <laughs> uh, Mad caddies. Nine, so 1995. And late night campfire stories with Fat Mike, Keith Morris, <laughs> Jello Biafra, Alec Melvin, El Heffy, Eric Sandin, and more. Will Fat Mike be wearing a dress during this thing? Probably. Evening, oh, Brown. me first in the gimme gimmies. Also, uh, Stone Stone Brewing so far the only thing that's kind of um, uh, for like the yeah, uh, beers, yeah, beers are still TBA. TBA for the beers, even though it's like next week. 
We'll start <laughs> Bruce the drunk in public ale for uh, no effects. Yeah, so that's why they're they're on. Probably that's so far it. You know the prices aren't actually horrible. Tent and car parking is uh, is one twenty nine. Uh, tasting pass is only seventeen fifty because the only beer that's going to be there is the fucking drunken public. Uh, <laughs> very unimportant person packages. Thirty nine ninety nine. Not wait. What? Thirty nine fifty. That ain't really. Oh, plus fees. Damn it. <laughs> All the attractions. That sounds like Warp Tour from like 1997. There's a dodgeball arena. There's a scavenger hunt. <laughs> <laughs> a game of skills at the Midway. <laughs> Giant games at the Unfair Midway. <laughs> Postcards from the Edge. Campfire stories. Um, s'mores. <laughs> Please market. Sold. <laughs> That's hilarious. Sold on the s'mores. Fatty's midnight matinee. <laughs> I I think this is amazing. I kind of want to go. <laughs> I know. A campground barber shop. Nice. I could use that. Yeah. Campground brewers breakfast. Eat at Joe's. Eat at Joe's. <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, feds warn South Florida breweries to stop producing marijuana-flavored beer. Damn it. <laughs> I'm not even going to go through it. There's a, bunch of mar- there's a bunch of breweries that were using a hemp oil to make marijuana-flavored beer, and they got told, no, stop now, or you'll okay. be shut down. To stop you there on that one, I so actually no wonder buzz? What, what's going to happen in Ontario come July 1st. I was going to say that Buzz beer from uh, Cool Brewing. Oh, shit. Look, a Texan snuck in without us knowing. Uh, No, I I acknowledged him, but you guys were all talking over me. (laughs) I'm joking. I I just cut it. But hi, Drunken One. How are you? Hey, Drunken One. I don't think he's actually really here. He's here. I don't think he's here. He's just standing very still like I used to. Oh, Oh, yeah. He's sleeping. (laughs) He's, He's not here. Drunken one's not here, man. Hey, Wonderland is uh, getting its own beer line. Mm. Wait, what they're is that? Introdu- they're introducing the Leviathan Lager and Behemoth Blondale through a partnership with GLB. Oh, I oh my God. God. That's hilarious. I'm sorry. That's hilarious. Because every time I think of Wonderland, I think of that movie about John Holmes. And when it's like Leviathan and Behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, anyone that ever thought that the the Guardian was a good good publication, I did post a news article at one point that made me sit there, and it's one of the first things where I've actually read it, and then went, "What the fuck did I just read?" And uh, basically, world's largest brewer develops cheaper, greener way to put bubbles in beer. Um, Jesus, Ricky. So <laughs> it's, it's about AB InBev. And basically, what I, what I can figure is they're talking about doing almost a pressure cooker type of thing, but but to sit there and be like, this is how we're getting bubbles in beer. Uh, where's some good ones? Uh, let's let's quickly read through here. Um, the world's largest brewer is rolling out what it claims to be a greener way to put bubbles in beer at a crucial early stage in its production and reduce the CO two emissions by five percent. <coughs> Uh, one second. It's developed a technique to generate the gas bubbles that remove unwanted aroma from the mix of grain and water known as the wort, without resorting to the traditional method of boiling it. So they're, they're making it even cheaper to make. Bubbles are said <laughs> to be crucial in determining the taste of a beer. Tradi- like, this guy knew nothing about beer. He just was talking about bubbles the entire time. Traditional gas bubbles in the early stages of brewing are generated throughout the natural cooking process, requiring bountiful le- levels of water and heat. AB Infib says, however, it is able to simulate the effects of boiling the brew. Simulate. So this is where I sat here going, what the fuck am I fucking reading? Like, <laughs> I, I almost threw something through my computer screen at that point. I, I can't. 
I can't do this anymore. I, I, I yeah, I'm not even. Uh, uh, what, I, what I get is that I think, I think they're doing like a pressure cooker. I think. But uh, who's the author of this article? One second. Uh, <laughs> the bubble for making beer. I'm trying to find the author of this because this person needs to be fired. Yes. No, no, he doesn't need to be fired. They need to. He needs to be shown the movie Young Einstein and tell him that's how they're putting bubbles in beer now. Daniel Daniel Bofi Daniel Bofi is his name, and he was in Brussels at the time. So he took a trip to Amheiser Bush headquarters on somebody's dime to write a thing about putting bubbles in beer. I really need to get a better job, apparently. Right? Seriously. So how do you guys like the bubbles? Obviously, didn't learn anything. <laughs> Hi, gang. Yeah, How are you, definitely. sir? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, obviously he didn't learn much at the uh, AB Embed <laughs> Brewery. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the whole brewing process takes away every bubble it ever had a chance to make, you know? <laughs> 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 I mean, for real, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Right, y'all are speechless now that I'm here? What? Come on. <laughs> we don't know what to say when there's a fucking Texan around. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to translate oh, it. Oh, oh, what are you doing? Slowly, we're slowly saying it back to each other to see if we understand. <laughs> right, are we all sending Texans and stuff or what? So, so, uh, uh, one, uh, May 6 is when you're supposed to uh, pick off the uh, dandelions for dandelion wine. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. I will keep that in mind. Note to, <laughs> uh, so, note to self. So this was what you were talking about earlier, Nick. Uh, the Supreme Court of Canada upholds laws restricting interprovincial transport of alcohol. Uh, so, in a unanimous decision issued this morning, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled that laws restricting the transportation of alcohol across provincial borders are not unconstitutional and will be upheld. The case stems from an incident in 2012 when New Brunswick resident Gerald Corneau was stopped at the New Brunswick uh, by border by RCMP officers and, and fined for having 14 cases of beer and three bottles of liquor that he had Dang. purchased in Quebec. That's Brian. This amount contravened New Brunswick liquor like control. Me. Just popped up that uh, chat was going live. So just jumped in. I was only like watching scary shows. Bedtime stories. Oh, oh boy. I was I was listening to him getting yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bedtime <laughs> stories. <laughs> Three right. bottles of liquor that he had purchased in Quebec. <laughs> this amount contravened New Brunswick Liquor Control Act, which states that residents are limited to bringing in a maximum of 12 pints of beer or one bottle of wine or spirits back into the province. Wow. Well. The case was first heard by New Brunswick Provincial Court in 2016, with Judge Ronald LeBlanc ruling that the pro province liquor, uh, the provincial import limit, was unconstitutional and indicating that the law used to charge Kono was in violation of Section 121 of the Constitution of Canada, which states all articles of the growth, all articles of the growth produce or manufacture of any of the provinces shall, from and after the union, be admitted free into each of the other provinces. See, I agree with him. The New Brunswick awesome. government appealed this ruling and took it to the Supreme Court, which sided with the government, stating that Section 134B of the Liquor Control Act does not infringe on 121 of the Constitutional Act. The full ruling is available online now in plain language summary to be posted later today. <laughs> nice. That's a lot of beer. 14 cases. <laughs> that's, that's quite well, a it's, beer. It's what, like a third of the price in Quebec compared to you guys? Oh, I see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's close to half, but it's really cheap to buy. It. And if he's, you know, if he's got the ability to just, you know, drive half an hour to go over to the Quebec border and save like a hundred dollars on beer just to stock up, then fuck, why not? Right. But they they have that that rule so they can restrict people from bringing too much beer in here to avoid bootlegging. The excuse that they used was to prevent people from bootlegging the beer, which is total horseshit. Now, uh, there is one last news article that I have two articles on because one came from the one brewery and the other came from the other brewery involved. Uh, so everybody knows all the, all the fun things that Toronto's Amsterdam Brewery has done in trademark disputes. Well, uh, well Amsterdam has uh, gave another cease and desist letter 
This time to Bandit Brewing in Toronto. So, uh, yeah. Here Fuck we yes, go. Man. Bandit Brewing just found out the hard way. YYZ is already trademarked for beer. Just because your name is Bandit doesn't give you the right to steal what you want, says Amsterdam Brewery. Uh, a battle is brewing between two craft beer makers in Toronto over the use of Pearson International Airport's code YYZ. Bandit Brewing recently got a cease and desist letter from Amsterdam Brewing Company for labeling a beer YYZ to LAX, the code for Los Angeles International Airport. Um... One second, I just read that quote already. Amsterdam has three brew houses in Toronto and started the process for trademarking YYZ for alcoholic brewery beverages, namely beer, in 2011. It was officially registered in April 2017. Now Amsterdam owns it for 15 years. Bandit caused a stir online Monday when it tweeted about the friendly mail from Amsterdam and labeled the company the big guys. Uh, a lot of you asked about the slight name change to our Milkshake IPA series. Turns out we got some friendly mail from the big guys claiming they own YYZ, our city's airport code. Since we don't have the funds to fight this, we are pleased to introduce our YY Star series. <laughs> nice. Carefoot was insulted, <laughs> insulted initially because he was merely defending his intellectual property. The craft brewing industry is a bit of a fraternity. We tend to not go after each other. We tend to go... Uh, do things to help each other uh, in a whole bunch of different ways, and I thought it was a very aggressive move on their part to name us and to categorize us a big guy stomping on them. Well, you know, if you didn't stomp on five other breweries already and give a fucking uh, pub the fucking change your name letter, maybe they wouldn't think of that. Uh, Bandit wouldn't do an interview, but said it in a statement to CBC Toronto, it has changed the beer's name to YY Star to LAX. Our customers have been puzzled about our apparent inability to spell YYZ, so we felt it necessary to explain the issue to them. We looked into... What about no pants on? I have no pants on. Uh, we looked into challenging the trademark. <laughs> Unfortunately, in small microbreweries, we don't have the funds or resources to fight this. It's not the first time Amsterdam has blocked another beer company from using YYZ. The same saga played out in Barry last year. Barnstormer Brewing Company branded a lager as YYZ Craft Lager, but after receiving its own cease and desist letter from Amsterdam Brewery, Barnstorm changed the title to First Class Lager. Mm -hmm. Here's uh, a question. Where's Pearson Airport in this whole situation? Because they kind of own the YYZ. <laughs> Not for beer, though. They, I was about to they, say, doesn't Rush own that? <laughs> <laughs> you, you agree to the terms of the cease and desist. You understand that they have the right to it. But I think the larger question here is that with such a broad, far-reaching name like YYZ, almost like having a trademark to Toronto or beer. Basically. Yeah. 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 Well, we, I had this talk, I had this talk with... Six. Yeah. Well, here's here's my other thought on this. is like, Since when did Amsterdam ever come out with a beer called YYZ? When have they ever used this trademark? Oh, they, they also just, they uh, they a lot of shit. Well, that's the thing. They're fucking trademark squatting. It's just like cyber squatting for domains. It's, if they they buy up a trademark, they might get used uh, by breweries. A search on Canada's trademark exist. databases shows Amsterdam Brewery has trademarked a number of other Canadian airport codes, including Montreal's and Calgary's, and several area codes, including 416, 905, and 514. Trademark lawyer, lawyer Ashley Frosey says many things you'd never imagine can be trademarked as long as it's distinctive to a brand and helps consumers identify the brand. Through trademark protection, you're given a company a monopoly to use YYZ in association with beer. In this instance, we know that there, there's a burgeoning, uh, burgeoning microbrewing industry in Toronto. Is it prohibited? Is it anti-competitive to give one company exclusive exclusivity over YYZ and the others, and over the other companies? She asks. Uh, the lawyer said they, there are sorts of questions the trademark branch at the Canadian Intellectual Property Office would have asked prior to approving Amsterdam's question for YYZ as a trademark for beer. Canada currently has a use it or lose it trademark law, so con continued use is an important thing for brand owners to prove, she said. Bear in mind, though, just because you have the trademark registration, it doesn't mean you necessarily have the monopoly over it. It's up to the brand owner to enforce their rights to go after those who are infringing. Okay. Uh, Amsterdam to, is accused of bullying. Five to four one six X, X Y Z logger. I'm just gonna read everything. Let's see how many uh, cease and desist letters I get. Please oh, no. this, this yeah. The Y Y Z name of Bandit's beer, dubbed a strawberry vanilla milkshake IPA, was caught the eye of some other small brewers and distillers. Some point out 
Amsterdam is hardly one of the big guys, given other mega brewers like Molson. However, others jumped to Bandit's defense, in one case, accusing Amsterdam of bullying. Um, who's this one by? Let's just see here. Uh, but for what it's worth, I don't see how that brewery with the trademark is known by that trademark. To my knowledge, it's not part of their branding. So that in mind, knowing the smaller brewery probably won't fight back uh, amounts to bullying, in my opinion. It's just sleazy. Right. Uh, Robin Le LeBlanc uh, pays uh, pays for a reminder then that it's not all one big green M and M out there. Uh, Amsterdam may have three shops and fifty or sixty beer lines now, but the owner said a couple of decades ago they were small, like Bandit, and they continue to be smaller than the international beer guys. We're not a big guy; we're a tiny business. Maybe relative to them, we're larger, but we're certainly not in the international grand scale. We don't sell really much outside of Toronto, so I didn't appreciate how we were characterized. Now we're going to get on to his side of the story shortly, but here, like like Nick knows, like a lot of people know, uh, again, uh, three speed logger gave a cease and desist to the three speed pub in Toronto. Uh, they have they have the four one six, the nine oh five, the, the five four seven. Uh, the only reason Belgian Moon had to be called Belgian Moon here is because they trademarked Blue Moon. Uh, they yeah, trademarked Firestone Walker, like so Firestone Walker can't come into Canada. They, they 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 trademark squat on a lot of trademarks. Okay. And... Mm. That's pretty yeah. shitty shit. Yeah, that seems unfair. Yeah. If if they're really concerned about coming across as like a, not one of the big guys, then they then should stop acting like it. Then stop acting like it. Stop stop acting like it. You know total, what I mean? Calling a total moosehead here. Now, except well, for you know, moosehead's got a good claim on the name Moose with their brand name. It does, Amsterdam's got shit. Toronto's Amsterdam Brewery defends their trademark assist over YYZ beer. A Toronto brewery is standing by its tr uh, by its trademark of YYZ. Shut the hell up! There's nobody here. <laughs> Chad, you're there. Well, no, uh, the fucking th anyone that thinks spring is great because you get to open your windows do not have a dog with German Shepherd in them. Okay, you fucking open a window and any sound that's from a mile away, she barks at. Oh my god, a squirrel walked by. <laughs> oh my god, a leaf blew. Oh my god, there's a bag. A bag. Anyway, after another local beer <laughs> night, the <laughs> order for using the city's airport code on its products. It's it in most respects, it's a tempest in a teapot, said Jeff Carefoot of the social oh, media storm brewing around his company. Amsterdam Brewing Company, who owns the trademark for YYZ. Uh, earlier this week, Bandit, but uh, whatever. Turns out, a few weeks back, we got some... Fr oh, okay, we're oh, that's all right. Bandit spokesman Juan, Juan Ganales Calconi said the brewery decided to put out a statement to clarify confusion because people thought they couldn't spell. We already talked about that. Uh, Carefoot is unhappy his business has been characterized as one of the big guys. Amsterdam includes a brew house, a brewery, and a barrel house location in Leeside and on the lake and defended his company's actions to protect the trademark. He filed for the trademark last April on the company's Adventure Brew series. We're really kind of arguing about nothing, he said, explaining his company is within its rights to take recourse having invested in the title. If you have a trademark and you don't protect it, you don't advise people they're infringing on it, then it's pretty much useless. Carefoot, who has operated Amsterdam Brewery for the past 16 years, it opened in 1986, has filed for trademarks on various other airport codes and brand names at Amsterdam Brewery that they, they make 60 a year. In Canada, the application to file for a trademark costs at least $250. Once approved, it costs $200 to register the trademark, which means the trademark owner will be issued a certification of registration. I'm kind of upset that they tried to vilify us unreasonably. There's a number of people who are upset at us. Wonder why. Yeah. Uh, through some comments in support of Bandit social media, suggests alternative names such as YYZ to get around the copyright. Others stood with, with Amsterdam. This is an unfortunate situation of not doing your homework. The craft beer industry in Toronto is awesome, and for Bandit to post this letter seems kind of petty. If you come up with a sweet name, trademark it. Look forward to seeing some great stuff from Bandit. One person wrote, at least one other company in the country holds a YYZ trademark. Uh, Mississauga Sound Company trademarked it under all audio classifications. Some other companies have the words YYZ embedded in their company names, such as legal cons consultants, YYZ traffic tickets. Can I come up with a new beer and call it Dan? <laughs> well, see, now, when we were talking about this stuff, I, when I was... Dan. <laughs> Amsterdam. <laughs> when I when I was interviewing uh, Peter Chioda, the owner of Flying Monkeys, the first time I Chioda. talked to him, uh, 
Uh, when I was interviewing him and we were talking about the brewery, he said, well, the Flying Monkeys wasn't our first name. I go, well, what was it? He goes, well, Simcoe Steam Brewing Company was our first name. He goes, I go, okay, so why did you change it? He goes, well, I got this great, this great phone call from Fritz Maytag. And he goes, Fritz Maytag's talking to him. And he goes, so I hear you're opening a brewery. And I said, yeah. He goes, what are you calling it? I go, Simcoe Steam Brewing. He goes, well, just so you know, I own the co- uh, the trademark on Steam for all things beer. So you got to name yourself something different. I'm like, really? That that's You can trademark Steam and say no one can use it anymore? Why don't you just trademark beer? He goes, yeah, or the. You know, <laughs> Everybody that uses the can't use it anymore. I've trademarked it. Wow. Gene Simmons supposedly point. trademarked OJ for orange juice. <laughs> Off topic. <laughs> well, I mean, it just—I mean, it just proves that you know it's stu- the stupidest yeah, things yeah. to be fucking trademarked. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Gents, I'm out for the night. Already, right, sir. You have a good night. Take, Take care, care. Hey, Brent. Brian He's is gone. Gonna get laid. He's probably gonna get laid. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what are you drinking there, uh, uh, drunken one? This is uh, Art Car IPA uh, from St. Arnold's. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I can get it or not. Pardon my oh, lighting. Okay. Most of my like light bulbs are literally at my dad's house right now. He's having a party on Saturday. And I hooked up some outdoor lighting for him, and uh, he needed the bulbs. I know I can't get that here because my liquor commission is really restrictive on the beer that comes into my province, especially now. That sucks. <laughs> that really oh, does. Live, I, I'm cracked open. Yeah, I do. Muskoka cream ale. Okay. Cream ale. There you go. In, in the same token, I'll probably never see that down here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's that. Uh, my next beer is something none of you will ever see. Mm. It's the Yorkie with a hit, English Porter, no. chocolate and vanilla. Small bit. Oh, from Niagara College. Is that the one where they uh, put the thing in the, it? Where no, Brett, no. This, uh, this is not the Brett one. <laughs> this guy it was the oldest student there. Uh, he's late fifties. He a salesperson for Walkerville. Mm-hmm. Okay. And this was a great beer. And you know it's a great beer because I bought a can of it and I don't very often buy a second of anything. Mm. So cheers, guys. Cheers. cheers. So what shall we talk about? Well, awesome. I was gonna, I was gonna ask about that. The uh, with with Stonehammer closing. Yes. Do you think that was a byproduct of just like market saturation? Of just- I think that was a byproduct of the fact that uh, for twenty five years they really didn't do anything different. They no. they had the exact same beers. They didn't try to expand. They only sold in Guelph. Uh, right after Leslie and and Peter took it over. They wouldn't come to they wouldn't come to the Albina Rhino Beer Festival because they only wanted to sell in Guelph. Well, you're not going to be able to survive only selling in Guelph when you're already having all these other new breweries opening up in Guelph. Um, Especially when you don't really stand up at the same level as no, the like you, city you, have, or... you, have a, you have a Pilsner, you have a oatmeal stout, and you have a dark a lager. Dark lager. And then you came out with an IPA, which you called Bandwagon, because we told you, why don't you jump on the bandwagon? So you thought it was great. It was me and Scott that were there that day. Um, and then you made a Baltic Porter, the continu- cont- continuity Baltic Porter, which was great. But uh, after you made these great beers, George left you because he saw the writing on the wall. And uh, he left and went on to better and bigger and better things. And then you just never could get a brewer that was anywhere near as good. And... You died. Yeah. Like it's it's what happens. Yeah, I mean, sure. they, they had enough space that they probably could have stayed open by contract brewing. Should have hired Mike Duggan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, be cool now. The problem the problem was just that, right? Like when when F and M owned it, when when Robert there owned it, he didn't let George do anything either. He wanted he wanted to keep everything small. And George was excited when somebody new bought them. He's like, yeah, maybe I'll get some more freedom. And then I'm talking to him. He's like, yeah, I didn't get any more freedom. <laughs> like, what the fuck? 
Like, why why buy a brewery that you can already see the numbers are falling on if you're not going to change anything? Yeah. I mean, I, I love I love Ken Woods uh, over at Black Oak, but I see Black Oak having the same problem very soon. Yeah, you, you don't really see too much newness. No, you don't even, you don't even see them at a lot of LCBOs anymore or a lot of beer stores. He's he's slowly dwindling. The last yeah. time I went, and, and anytime I would go in, he would always hand me a can. Or, he'd hand me a couple cans of something as I'm talking to him. And last time, and it was always, you know, something was only a few days old because his beer was popular. Last time, last time he gave me something, it was two months old, and it was right out of the fridge in the very front. Like yeah. you're not, you're not moving product anymore. Do something different. And he was telling me, you know, he's like, I don't know what to do anymore because you sit here and you look at the numbers, and he's like, what, do I pay? Do I pay for this type of advertising or do I not? He goes, I don't know what to do anymore. But you got to change. Mm -hmm. No, but he doesn't want to change. Like, yeah, you come up with new stuff. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's the that's the conundrum. It's like. Do you brew the beer that you like to drink, or do you brew the beer that people want to drink? And you know, you, or if you have the space, do both. Or do both. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, well, 10, I mean it, years, it's 10 one thing years to... came out almost ten years ago. No, it yeah. was ten years ago because they opened up. No, they opened up in two thousand. So yeah, it still it still was almost ten years ago. Eight years. That's they that's their like, big beer. beer. That's their big beer. They hold on to is ten bitter years. The ten bitter years isn't even as good as it used to be. No, but the recipe is the exact same. It's just things change, palates change, the recipes change. Yep. His recipes stayed the same. Hmm. Well, yeah, they don't use uh, Nelson Sylvain anymore, don't they? I thought they changed away from that. No, you you are correct. That that is the one big difference. But he only used that for the first two years, basically. Hmm. Yeah, but I remember it being epic when that was what they used. Yep. But uh, now it's just I don't just don't feel it uh, any time I drink. But yeah, you're right. The palettes do change, but they need to start jumping on what's current. They should come out with like a sour, or they should come out with a uh, with a New England style IPA or something. And mm -hmm. the thing is, I think the damage is done with that brewery. I don't think you could come out with that and have the hipsters go to you, have the young kids go to you anymore because Lost their credibility. I think. Not even mm -hmm. uh, like right now. He's at this point where you know if he brings out new stuff, his loyal his loyal customers will stop buying from him. But if he doesn't get, bring out new stuff, he has no chance of staying alive. Right, death spiral. But, yeah, he, he's in that death spiral. I, I give them another two years. What what he's yeah. going to do is maybe is if he wants to try and survive is uh, you know he's got to be experimental and try some new stuff, but try it in small batches to see if it actually sells. And on top of that, if you get a core lineup that's selling well, or we'll just stick with that, yeah. shave off any kind of beers that aren't doing well. Well, they they, they did rebrand last summer. Uh, Black Oak did with their uh, yeah, all, all their labels completely changed. And because uh, see, Cameron's rebranded as well, and Cameron's yes, kind did. of in that in that, that spiral as well. Cameron's rebranding did amazing for them, but then they also started coming out with other things like the bourbon barrel aged fucking barley wine that they sell all the time now. And oh, I forget the name of that. Is that the uh, where the uh, room? Yep. The what? Where do the buffaloes roam? Oh, oh yeah, can, yeah, okay. I, I, I can still get that at, at the uh, LCBOs, at one of the LCBOs in St. Catharines. Yep. Well, they make it on the regular now. Oh, is it on the regular? I thought it was just cast off from... Uh, nope, from it's regular now. Oh. And they, they, it's the first time I've ever seen somebody box a can to make the can look more special. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I bought like it to twice. <laughs> I schmucked myself into that one. So is 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 the where the Buffalo Room is? Is it available at the LCBOs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I might have to try and find one when I get up there. Yeah, no they they're doing uh, they're doing a lot of more intriguing things. They're they're giving uh, they're giving Jason more free reign, and that that's great. Uh, something they hadn't done done before. Bill Bill actually realized you know we're we're going to go in our death spiral if we don't do something. So we did something. And I mean that that's you, you only have so much time when you're starting that death spiral to get out of it. Yep. And now now people like uh, rebranding, sure you rebranded Ken, but I still think you're just clawing at uh, clawing at the sides now. You're slowly falling in. And it's too bad. I love Ken and I I like his beers. It's just it you just you see it. And you walk into the brewery and you that nobody's been there in a while and it's like wow, I feel bad. Yeah. 
Well, here, here's one thing I'm thinking of is that remember how we used to talk about when is beer saturation going to hit? It's almost like we're starting to see the, the early phases of that now. And it's not that it's not like, um, you know, beers going out of craft beers going out of style. It's just it's it's more which breweries are going to stay with it and which ones are going to die off. Mm-hmm. And it's also it's all going to come down to which ones stay current with the trends. Yep. That. And, that, and that's how it's gonna market's gonna handle saturation on its own because all the weaker players are gonna fall by the wayside and then fall into death spirals. Yeah. Oh, how many other breweries have defunct lately? Let's let's go and look at that quick. Yeah, be yeah, interesting. Uh, let's going. see, uh, Mom and Ho- let's go to Mom and Hops, right? Now. I remember, I remember a few years ago, like five years ago, five six years ago, uh, Black Oak was it was a, one of the hip breweries in in Ontario. Stuff that you used, used to send me. I remember thinking like ten better years and uh, um, the Nut Brown were fantastic beers. Yeah, I, I I love that Nut Brown. Um, mm. that, that's actually what I tried to brew when I brewed my Nut Brown. That that's what that's what I wanted to emulate. Mm. And I I just looked at my uh, untaps of that brewery and they're all four like four to five plus. So they brew good beer. It's just that yeah, what what's hitting social like they don't I don't even. I don't even think I follow them on any social media. So I don't even know if, if they're pushing it through social media or not. And maybe that's the thing too. And I don't know how, if, how what it's like regionally, but you know, I follow a lot of Ontario breweries on like uh, Instagram, uh, not, not so much Twitter, but Instagram a lot. And I wonder if, if the ones that do hit, you know, social media harder are the ones that are coming out ahead a little bit, you know, um, you know, Maybe the ones that have been around for a few years, and maybe they're run by people who aren't so like completely comfortable with social media and right. and, and and pushing their product that way. Maybe those are the, like maybe that's one of the reasons why they're falling by the wayside is because they're not hitting their demographic where their demographic is absorbing content. You know what I mean? I don't know. Okay, in the last in the last two years, fifteen breweries have closed. Wow. If, you count, if you count 2015 as well, we're looking at another one, two, three, four, five, another five. Is there a list? Like, oh, yeah. Look, I'm looking at it right now. So uh, Last Castle Brewing in Port Stanley just closed. Uh, Dog and Pony Brew Lab in Ottawa closed. They weren't open very long. Uh, County Road Beer Company in Prince Edward County. They actually made some good beers. They're closed. Uh, Pizza Company in downtown Windsor is closed. Uh, Broken Stick Brewing in Ottawa closed. Uh, I didn't like that guy anyway. I went, I went, I did. Uh, he was my last beer umentary video when we were in Ottawa. He was the last place we stopped, and he just he didn't rub me right. Uh, that the guy that was just I like can't expect uh, fellatio from everyone, man. I know. Wasn't, that, <laughs> wasn't, wasn't that the guy that just basically uh, kept giving like one word answers and just acted like he wanted you out of the building? Yeah. Pretty <laughs> much. Yeah. Uh, Presquil Craft Brewing in Brighton closed. Union Jack Beer Company in Sault Ste. Marie closed. They're the guys that blamed uh, blamed the LCBO, but they had brewing faults in everything they were doing, and their brewery was infested with a bunch of foreign bacteria and nice, all that. Nice. Uh, Sexton Craft Beer Company closed. Uh, Sexton went out of business. Uh, I wasn't even open for a day, and I already closed. Snowman Shit. Brewing Company closed. Uh, Ontario Beer Company closed. Uh, Barvolo Brew House, uh, uh, Garden Brewers, practically, Garden yeah, practically Irish, Bentley Brewers, Barn Door Beverages, uh, Turtle Island, uh, King Brewery. They turned into Thornbridge, but they still. Um, Gateway Brewing Company and Stockpot Ales. Hmm. Nothing that really stands out to me. Yeah, it's almost like nobody's there, the ones yeah. that are family. Well, I mean, like maybe it's the ones that didn't really get that big or didn't have it. What it, what it Last took, Castle, like, Last Castle was apparently one of the giant, giant like uh, hyped breweries in Ontario. Just nobody went there because nobody goes to Port Stanley. Um, yeah, well, yeah it's again, no, it's a Port Stanley. The county County Road made good beer. They, they but they all they had was a lager and ale and a saison. Oh, that's right. I remember that one. Uh, what was shit, the one? That was a what was that brewery that came to your fest that had just one beer? It was a saison, and nobody bought it. 
Uh, Catalyst. Catalyst. They're still around, aren't they? Yep. Yeah, they didn't do that. that was last year, wasn't it? They uh, did Garden that? Garden Brewers. Victor North is a great brewer. Um, I'm what sad. was it? Garden Brewers. I'm kind of. I was kind of sad when I heard the Garden went out of business because yeah, there was they, one beer that they made. It was I thought it was really good. It was the peppercorn one. Yep. Uh, barn uh, Barn Door did good stuff out, and so did Turtle Island. Turtle Island was really good. Uh, they were brewing. They were brewing their stuff though out of. Uh, uh, they were out of Whippersnapper, and that that was just weird to me too. That Whippersnapper would have somebody contract brew there because Whippersnapper did brewing in a way I've never seen before that day, which was their fermenters were were uh, industrial barrels with food safe bags inside them and the food mm -hmm. safe bags they tied a knot in the top and put the knot over the side that's oh how God, they that's how they brewed that's fucked up that doesn't Weird. even make sense like fermenting in a plastic bag it's crazy but I maybe know. it's like crazy smart i don't know <laughs> <laughs> what was that uh what was that it's special person, setup person that, style ipa what's that special setup that twb uses oh they use they use those really 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 weird uh old like pilsner uh, tanks uh so what they do they do it in plastic bags too but they have tanks the tanks are on their side and they have a liner inside them and it's under counter pressure so you you fill the liner it ferments inside the liner and then you hook that tank up directly to your tap and you pour it from the liner and then it's it's counter pressured so as as the liner empties the air pushes it forward more so it's it's a weird setup too weird uh -huh. I knew it was odd looking when I saw it because it looked almost like industrial dryers on a wall. Yeah, yeah, sort of like <laughs> that. It was neat though. Like that visit to TWB, that's got to be one of the best brewery visit, visits I've ever done because they were so fun to talk to. Passionate about it. Yeah, he he was. Uh, he reminded me a lot of Simon actually. Oh, Simon. Yeah. Uh, what do we have? Brendan went to bed. Good night, Brendan. Um, uh, Chad, is Trafalgar still around? Speaking of failures, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. Uh, All or Nothing Brew House bought Trafalgar. They bought the whole brand. They bought the wow. they bought the brewing license. They bought the distilling license. They bought the brewery. They put uh, half a million dollars in to clean it because it was infected with with uh, stray yeast. That, ex that explains everything. Then they spent another three hundred thousand dollars putting a bottling line in, so they weren't fucking filling their bottles with a uh, with a beer gun. And then they also put a canning line in. Nice. So they put a lot of money in after buying it from Michael Arnold. Um, <laughs> I think I still got that bottle of moonshine that I bought there. An apple pie moonshine that they had. <laughs> Does that mean Trafalgar's is going to be unfortunately decent, though? Could be. Well, they had, I had some beers had before that were fairly. Well, see, that's decent. the thing, right? We we were given some secret, secret beers. Uh, now, what happened was uh, they did a black label, a black label brewing, and their black label was their good beers. And what they did was they did them for the Canadian and the Ontario Beer Awards, and then they put some aside for us. And I walked in, and he came up. He's like, here you go, Chad. Go review. And they were fucking amazing. Mm. And then they that, made them again. That was the time that me and me and Guy were with you, wasn't it? That they gave us those ones? Because I remember having one of them. It was like a Swartz beer. It was fucking amazing. That was intriguing. Everything dropped for me there. What the hell? I was trying to talk to you, and all of a sudden, you, you left and came back. Yeah, that, that was something That's I've weird. never seen before. But Yeah, yeah but that, the Shorzy stuff. That that visit that I think that me and Guy were with you at that that time was it weren't we? Yep. Yeah, because I remember trying one of those black those those special beers. It was like a Schwartz beer that blew her fucking mind. Yeah, the espresso stout. Yeah, that's it. But that yeah, yeah that was amazing. one of them. The espresso stout was amazing. We were like, this is fucking Trafalgar. Are you kidding? And then they put them and out again, and they put them out to the LCBO. But what they did when they put them out again was they started filling again with the little beer gun and all that. So they were all oxidized oh, and bullshit uh, again. And, yeah. and then I tried it again. I'm like, fuck you guys. And I actually, I was, like, I was so angry. I was fuck so you. angry. I'm like, I just gave you a yeah. 975 out of 10 for this fucking beer. And now it's a five. 
fuck you. But, but I remember, I remember like BDU the years before, before that, that I actually visited Trafalgar. Everybody was talking about how shit Trafalgar was. Then I go up there and I try the uh, one of the first beers I try from is that fucking uh, uh, the espresso stout, and I'm like, really? What's wrong with this? <laughs> you know. Everybody's making fun of Trafalgar, and I, it's not like I doubt you well, guys. And when they sent the when fuck? they sent them to our festival, they sent the gardener as one of the well, one of the sales guys. <laughs> <laughs> every time every time we went there, he was always out in the garden, like picking flowers and shit. And he'd he'd come in and he'd go, "What do you guys need?" And then they sent him as the fucking sales guy for the fucking That's festival. Hilarious. I'm like, "Come on, really?" But they sent some cool beers to the festival, like. Kind of fine. What was the beer that we had? Schwartzy Espresso. That's the one. We gave it a four. I gave it a four and a half. Then there was the Raspberry Mint Pale Ale. Raspberry Mint. That's oh yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah, uh, I I gave it a two and a half. Uh, then there was the Schwartzy Sweet Stout, which I'm assuming is a Schwartzy Milk Stout or something. And apparently, I tapped that twice. The weed beastie. Okay, this is going to stuff that I brought back for me. But yeah, we're talking about like that that stuff that they well, gave. Well, weed, weed beastie was one of their black labels too. Yeah, I brought. Is that when we? Because uh, I brought a bottle of that back. Okay, yeah, I did uh, bring back one of the. Uh, uh, fuck, let me see it. Show it here. Here's my, tap here, uh, on it. Here's my tap on it. It had that special label on it that had that. Uh, this the. Uh, yeah. That was one of the rebottlings of it then, because the I think the ones we had normally didn't have the uh, didn't have the wax seal on the label. Okay, so that one might have been like the next year when you came that because they did have them at the LCBO at one point. Well, here's the here's the picture that I took of the um, fuck. I'll share it again. Of the Schwartz Espresso, the time we had it at your place, and it clearly has the uh, the wax seal logo on the bottle. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm incorrect. Hmm. Yeah, look, play the comment here, Aaron. Really? I'm not <laughs> kidding either. Couldn't believe Trafalgar made this. <laughs> Holy shit, can you believe that that was fucking three years ago? Uh, Middlefra there says his brew group in Ottawa used to call them uh, Trafalgar. Trafalgar. Tra <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Seems appropriate. Uh, so. Fucking Michael Arnold didn't care. That's the thing. He he knew his beer had problems, and he didn't give a shit. Uh, and if you told him his beer had problems, he didn't give a shit. If you called him as a consumer and was like, "Hey, my, I got your beer, and it had this wrong with it," he I don't fucking care, and he'd hang up on you. Like he he was <laughs> he was great. Uh, his brother should have dealt That's with sad. everybody that was people. Every every personal interaction should have went through his brother. There should have been no person interaction with just him ever. I don't know. Like he he hurt their brewery more than anything just with that stuff. His kids were awesome too. Uh his kids I I'm sort of sad they didn't want to take it over. Uh but at the same time I'm not sad because they would never have put the same money into the place to to upgrade it. Right. it it's in a good location in Oakville. I mean Oakville doesn't have many breweries. It's basically Trafalgar and and Cameron's. So yeah. you you have one brewery that can make something really good and one brewery that can make a whole bunch of really standard stuff. It, it, you you have exactly what you need in the city. Sure. Yeah. So you're saying that uh, all all or nothing bought them out? Yes. And all or nothing was just a contract brew, were they not? They were. And they just did their one wheat, their hoppy wheat beer, which I actually yeah. I, I do enjoy that. It was called the underdog until they got hit with a cease and desist from uh, mm. from Ottawa based uh, fucking Broadhead, Broadhead Brewing. Oh, are you serious? Yeah, because uh, Broadhead Brewing had the underdog underdog lager or IPA, underdog IPA. I wish they used the. Uh... Yeah, yeah, no, they, they, were, they were squatting. Oh. They, they didn't use it on just one beer and never use it again. Okay, yeah, I I used I've had two beers from uh, Broadhead. I was trying to remember who they were. I had their Amber, and uh, what the hell's the other one they do? Dark Horse. The Stout. No. The Dark Spearhead? Horse. Stout. The, uh, I've had I've had Grand, Grindstone Amber and the Dark Horse Stout. Uh, they also do a blueberry a blueberry blonde. The fucking blueberry. <laughs> Again, bodacious the blueberry blonde. According yes, to the bodacious text. blueberry blonde. Jesus Christ, that shit. Stop putting blueberries in beer. The flavor doesn't come through, man. 
bodacious dude. Dude. Oh. Totally yes. radical, dude. Totally, dude. Totally. totally. So this, <laughs> is our, uh, this is our Ashley uh, Blueberry IPA. Fuck <laughs> uh, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is okay. Sexton Brewing's uh, blueberry IPA. <laughs> well, Spearhead does a bunch. They do the they have their Hawaiian style Moroccan brown ale, the, the Sam Roberts band ale. Yeah, that's Could actually a brewery I, I haven't heard Spearhead from in a did, long time. Spearhead just bought a brick and mortar earlier this year and just opened. So who knows what they're going to do now? Oh, they they actually have their own brewery now because I yes. remember they were. Who were they, who were they contract brewing from before? Uh, cool. cool, Cool Brewing is doing it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I remember okay. the, uh, the 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 pineapple. You, I think you sent me a bottle of pineapple one time. Yeah, the then, pineapple pale ale. And then the pineapple and the Moroccan showed up here for a little while in New Brunswick, and I, I remember liking both. Yeah, and they they had the Sam Roberts beer, and they had one other. They had a uh, I can't remember what it was. They had one other though for a while, and uh, yeah, then they now they do. I, I didn't know Sam Roberts' beer was still around. I didn't even know Sam Roberts was still around, to be honest. I, I, I just thought he just went under a rock and died somewhere. I thought so, too. And then if somebody was like, no, he still tours. And I'm like, he fucking still tours? Like, well, good for him. Sam this Roberts. Where have all the good people gone? <laughs> oh, gosh. Brother down. Brother down. <laughs> Fuck, that was early 2000s, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like 2002 or 2003, 2002, something like that, that uh, Sam Roberts was cool. Oh, okay. So I'm, I'm sorry. To back it up, I was mixing up Broadhead Brewing with Spearhead Brewing. Oh. So Spearhead Brewing does the Sam Roberts. Yes, Spearhead does the Sam Roberts and does the Hawaiian Pale yeah. Ale and does the Moroccan Brown. Broadhead and, does the Grindstone Amber and the Dark Horse and the Bodacious. Okay, fuck it. Sorry. And the and the Underdog IPA and the. Oh yeah, there it is, Underdog Pale. What did I give Bodacious Blueberry? <coughs> I'm I was fighting to find out. Four. Oh no, you four. Yeah, did you I find it totally three. Bodacious? Yeah, three out of five. <laughs> uh, I I poo pooed on it. <laughs> start, a, start a petition for blood boot I and mean, for a uh, bud boot blueberry. <laughs> yeah, it was around two thousand two, two thousand three, two thousand two that uh, Sam Roberts was uh, popular. They were populaire. Well, hopefully he he like put all of his money away because. Well. Ah. See now, another band that was populaire back then was called uh, Crush Luther, and Crush Luther, uh, his name was Eric Mallory, but he went by Luther Mallory. And he was the guitar player in my band when I was in high school. And uh, he always wanted to play little. He had, uh, I actually could play one of his songs later when we go offline. Uh, he had this whiny emo voice, and he always wanted to sing. And we always let him record one song on every album we did with his whiny emo voice. And then when we broke up, he went off and became famous doing whiny emo music. And we were like, fuck, why didn't we just let him fucking sing? <laughs> But uh, he he ended up being popular then, and then he just disappeared off the face of the earth. Ooh, apparently, man. apparently he teaches guitar to kids now, and that's what he does. Uh, Jeff Jeff was the lead guitar player, and he was the backup guitar player, the rhythm guitar, if you will. Uh, Jeff, I say Jeff because you know Jeff Nick. Um, oh, your Ottawa buddy Jeff. Yeah, like Jeff and Bubba. Yeah, Jeff and Bubba. Oh, cool. Glenn, who you met the first year, Glenn was our was our drummer. Oh yeah, and Glenn. I'm trying to remember Glenn. Really tiny kid. Always smiling. Always high. <laughs> That's why he was always smiling. <laughs> always smiling, yeah. <laughs> right? I don't know if I remember. Probably if I'd seen him or something. I don't know. Uh, we have. We're talking four years ago. Can you oh. believe it? Uh, by the way, did you notice that it's uh, currently uh, one month to the day till the festival? Yeah, don't tell me that because I'm freaking out. Yeah, well, I thought I'd help. 
<laughs> right? I don't think they did it. <laughs> so don't be a dick, you dick. <laughs> 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Oh my god, there's 95 breweries being planned for Ontario right now. What? Holy Where are they being planned? <laughs> oh, in planning? In planning. <laughs> wow, everybody wants to start a brewery. Gosh, you're on this craze. But here's the thing, though. I mean, if if there's like, for every like, de like medium or decent sized community, each one of them could house like a pub. Or, or a brew, or is, whatever not, it may be. They're not right? doing that, right? They're not looking at, hey, where should we go? They're looking at, hey, let's do another one in Toronto. Let's do another one here. Let's do another one there. <laughs> right? Toronto's like, a lot. There, there is, if you count brick and mortar and contract brands, there's almost 400 brands in Ontario right now. Wow. That's insane. It is a little much. Yeah. <laughs> That's ridiculous. With 90 coming. Really is. Mm. Wow, that's and that's Welland insane. doesn't have one. Oh, actually, ah, 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 look here. Welland might actually have one in planning. Let's really? Go. Let's Is it mine? Fuck, I don't know. It's called Denison <laughs> Fun. I can't wait till Sexton Brewing opens up again. Niagara has three being planned. Three more? Yep. Well, three. is is uh, Bench one of those since they're technically not open yet? No. Oh, there's more in Hamilton too. I don't know. It's just it gets to a point where it's market saturation. Like it's, you know. Uh, how about this? These these two are going to fight when they come into come into fruition over names. I can guarantee you. Both in Niagara Falls, Common Ground Brewing Company and oh. Common Thread Brewing Limited. Oh, yeah. you know what? I've seen the ads for. Uh... Like on uh, job postings for common uh, common ground, but I haven't seen anything for common thread. <laughs> Maybe they were once business partners. I don't know. They both are in phase one, so I'm surprised you've even seen any uh, any job postings yet. Yeah, no, it was like well, maybe about a month ago. So who knows? This is apparently, very dark apparently me, broken right? stick is trying to open up again. Hey, Bromance Brewing Company is going to be opening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Burnstown is getting its own brewery. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That is great. For those of you that don't know, Burnstown is is basically uh, basically where Bubba lives right now. Um, and his name's Bubba. So, uh, yeah, another, like, there's, there's a brewery in Packenham. There's a brewery in uh, in Clearwater Springs. There's a brewery in uh, in Carlton Place. There's a brewery. There's going to be one there. there. There's way too many breweries in that little tiny area of butt fuck nowhere farmers. <laughs> I guess well with that bromance thing, right? <laughs> no, that one's in Cornwall. That one's not. Drunken one, have you uh, done any homebrew lately? I have. Yeah, I've. Uh... I've done quite a bit actually. Uh, I've got a the wee heavy that's been sitting in that fermenter for a minute now. Um, I did uh, a couple of five gallon buckets of a just a Michelob clone. Yep. I'm taking five of it. Uh, I built a I put together a uh, uh, we call it a kegerator kind of thing, but it's yep. going to be out of just a trash can to take to the party. <laughs> I've got a kegerator here at the house, but I built one up. It looks very western. Uh, I, I'll do some video and take some pictures of it and such, and that should be out pretty soon. Uh, Dad's party is Saturday. <clears throat> he he'll be or he he's seventy five now, but his party will be this Saturday. Yeah. And so yeah, expect a little bit of footage from there, or, or at least some uh, some video later on or something. Right. On. So uh, yeah, 
a Michelob it, clone. So is that just a bunch of, of uh, like DME and? Uh, uh, well, no, this was this was grains and stuff. Oh but yeah, it, it's it's lots of rice and corn. You know that make yeah. this particular one. Out. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry to jump in here, but just so yeah. you guys know, because I was talking about the Ottawa Valley and breweries, there's also oh. one opening up in Carp. There's also one opening up in Carp, so let's add another little town there. Another one? Uh, yeah. Actually, there's another one in Niagara Falls opening up, Slippery Jacks. Uh, yeah, that sounds pretty apropos for Niagara Falls. Yep, yep. Dirty <laughs> CDs. But, I mean, like, I, I don't know what the population of Carp is. They probably don't have... Uh, well, I they don't know. have one of their own, but they're right beside fucking Packenham and fucking Burnstown and fucking uh, Carlton uh, Place and everywhere else that has one. Oh, another one opening up in Guelph because, you know, one just closed, so we should open up another. Why not? The other one seemed to do so well. <laughs> but, but again, you know, like, w with all of these breweries opening up, like, what what's their capacity? Like... Are, are we talking small capacity? Do they are they opening up big, thinking they're going to be huge, or are they just going to serve their their local yeah. <laughs> and just be realistic? Sorry, sorry. Constance Bay up in the Ottawa Valley is opening a brewery too. Oh wow, Jeez. Ottawa Valley! It's going to be a happening place for beers. Oh yeah, and they're all farm communities, so you know they're going to be great. It's all going to be cream ales and Kolsch's and pilsners. Cream ales, mm -hmm. Kolsch's. Hey, I hey, I actually like free meals here. Hey, new <laughs> Tecumseh's getting a brewery because Tecumseh has one, so new Tecumseh should. <laughs> you know, the Windsor area actually does have a, a pretty strong concentration of uh, breweries. Yep, Stratford's getting another one. That'll be like the fourth there now. Grimsby's getting another one. <clears throat> Grimsby? Yeah, just called, uh, what is it, uh, Grim City Brewing. Interesting. Well, that's technically Hamilton, so. Yes, but Bench is basically there. Uh, Bench is a little bit closer. London's getting two more. Waterloo has four more on this list. Jesus. Bowmansville has three more on here. Simcoe has two because you know Simcoe needs more. So here's the thing, though. Here's what I'm wondering: where are all these, where are all these people like learning how to brew? Because I don't think uh, Niagara College is graduating that many people. <laughs> no, it's it's a 15 person course. So yeah, exactly. So they have assholes like me opening up breweries, thinking that they can brew commercial quality beer. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. You said it, not me. Hey man, I'm just an asshole making beer in a bucket. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I mean, that's what a brewery in Welland seemed would <laughs> make right? sense. W wouldn't it be I, awesome? I was talking to a guy last year that wanted me to come on as a consultant to open a brewery in Welland. That's why I was looking if he was on there, but he's not on there. Make a nano brewery where you just make it all in buckets. It's all in buckets. <laughs> oh, I but, forgot. Smith Falls already has a brewery too. Going back to the Ottawa Valley, but like five barrel size buckets. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> you imagine? Uh, Ashton Beckwith in the Ottawa Valley has one. It's like this is a uh, ghetto, ghetto light, <laughs> right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, I I know my market in Welland. Just a whole shit ton of malt. Malt liquor. There, craft malt liquor. That's the new thing. That's the new thing. Craft malt liquor. 100% craft artisanal high gravity liquor. <laughs> artisanal <laughs> malt liquor. Oh, wow. That'd be awesome. And shameful at the same time. <laughs> Great. Just just make it like a joke brewery and like people would just like ironically like yeah. it. They're just like, yeah, that's exactly what would happen. They'd be drawn to it. That that's that's why people drink paps. They ironically like it. <laughs> I did not like it. Uh, oh, what do we have here? Um I'm glad I wasn't the only one then. <laughs> what that actually talk about paps? breweries makes poor uh Dio is out of the loop. I haven't seen him this quiet in ages. Time to talk about Texas breweries. Shut the Canucks up. Uh, there's not much going on in, in in fucking Texasville over there. They got Shiner. Shiner Bach. 
Uh, we, we've got some around. I just don't know that much about them to be able to, to talk about them. Oh, what's, what's this? Uh, Middlefra, a mobster lives there. I'll have to ask him if he's involved in the Burnstown story. For those that don't know, Mob is members of Barley Merit. It's Ottawa's biggest homebrew club. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking Mafia for a second. <laughs> yeah. The members of Barley Merit. I'll have to ask if uh, I'll have to ask if Bubba's in, somehow involved. Maybe he's supplying the pigs. Nobody, nobody like that. No, nobody knows. Uh, nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> right? Bueller. Bueller. Bubba's a big farmer. Bubba's a big farmer. Okay. Bubba's a big farmer. Bueller. Right? Bueller. Bueller. Trains Coffee Crow. Oh, you yes. got a nitro cold brew coming? Yes, I do. Oh, I think I know what I'm sobering up with halfway through the fest. <laughs> sobering up with halfway through. <laughs> oh, I love a good nitro cold brew. I mean, I, I love, love, I love, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I mean, I have only ever had one nitro cold brew, I guess, but I've had lots of, I have a few different cold brews and I, I love it. So I'm just kind of looking forward to trying this thing. Oh, I like cold brewed coffee in my beer, especially. And there's some cold brewed coffee in this beer. It'd be kind of, kind of interesting oh, to like, do a cold brew with cold brewed coffee. Who won the first game? Fucking bullshit. Wait, who won the first game? Oh, the second round's already started. Pittsburgh. I'm like, holy fuck, Pittsburgh, just let Washington win one. Jesus. Oh, fuck the Caps. Yeah, fuck and, the Caps. And Vegas is winning 4 nothing right now in the Yeah, oh, yeah. See, that's what happens when you allow a team to come into the NHL with a stacked fucking deck. They're gonna no, probably... one expected them. no one expected Did you try to throw to a pun in there? That's the funny thing. What? <laughs> you just tried oh, to pun Oh, it's not that. like a Vegas pun? Yeah. You just well, totally I was, tried yeah, I was gambling on maybe it working. <laughs> you just oh, did it again, you asshole. <laughs> I feel bad for Washington. I wanted this to be their year to go on to the at least Eastern final. Well, yeah, that's what happens when Philadelphia loses and Pittsburgh wins. The Capitals always lose to Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, the Capitals are so so healthy this year, and Ovechkin wants it so bad. I thought it would be okay. He has six goals already in the in the playoffs. Wow. Yeah, my team didn't even make it, so. <laughs> Neither did mine. Mine was second last in the league. Mine was right down. However, there. I was I was doing a dance last night when uh, when the Leafs were eliminated. <laughs> I was kind of maybe I, I wasn't really kind of like wait hoping they were going to get eliminated so much. As no, no, I was, I was. When I saw them, when I saw them, like I, really, what I said on the post analysis hangout last night was that. Uh, when I saw, oh, Toronto's up 4-3 in the middle of the second, oh, there's still plenty of time to f for them to fuck this up. <laughs> and yep. they fucked it up. That's exactly what happened, too. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Oh, I, 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 I kind of want it to be Vegas-Pittsburgh in the finals and then Vegas to beat Pittsburgh. So, um, you know, St. Louis, uh, sorry, Fleury can be like, yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> five nothing <laughs> now. <laughs> five nothing Golden Knight. Holy shit. I'm just glad that uh, the Islanders did better than the New York Rangers. Fuck the Rangers. <laughs> they really? Yeah. Yeah, the, the Islanders didn't do horrible this year. They just weren't. They didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, they're just in a freaking division where they're basically stacked. <laughs> yeah. Montreal is practically in free fall for the second half of the season. Okay, Montreal sucks. No, they they well, they do. They did this year. Oh, well, year. let's see how well the Coyotes did. The coyotes. <laughs> the Coyotes. The coyotes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so uh, coyotes next Thursday, the plan suck. is not to do BDU. The plan is that I'm going to take this roll of tape here, and yeah. me and my friends are going to do some uh, some Edward Forty hands. So oh, we'll live. Be, we'll be live streaming Edward Forty hands. Um, that is oh, the plan as of right now. Next Thursday, my birthday. Oh wow! Well, nice. What is going to be the forty that you guys will be? Uh, we will be doing two growl, two crowlers from the Cayman kettle, and then <laughs> five hundred milliliters. So we're not technically doing Edward forty hands; we're doing Edward forty point four hands. Yeah, 
because it's actually more, <laughs> it ends up being more mathematically and it's going to be harder because we're going to make it so that you can open the can before the crowlers get taped to your hands. Yeah. But you have to pick the can up with the crowlers. Should be a bottle of old English and a bottle. No, of no, that's, that, that, that's, that's <laughs> gross. None of us want to do that. Yeah. I mean, you have to keep but it you, at least a little classy, right? But you gave the old English a positive review. It doesn't matter. Nobody wants to drink two fucking <laughs> old, old English. It's actually not that bad for a high gram of malt liquor. No, but do you want to drink two fucking? I felt, I, I, I chugged some that bad. before. It was actually not no, bad. No, I didn't say. Did you chug any before? I said, did you want to chug two forties of it back to back? I, I've done it. I've done. Do you it. want to do it? No. Exactly. Hey, Nick, Nick you, you used to live in Calgary, right? Yeah, yeah it is. Okay, do. You, like, what was the time period that you lived in Calgary? 2006, 2007. Did they still have Big Bear? Big Bear? Big Bear malt liquor? Fuck, I have no idea. <laughs> no? All right. Because I, I grew I up in remember. Calgary, and if we yeah. didn't get OE, we got Big Bear. And it was, like, their, like, regional malt liquor. It was the nastiest shit in the world. But that's yeah. that was my teenage I, years I, right there. I don't remember. Like, um... I think the only thing I remember drinking it there was like Kokanee Amber and uh, or no Kokanee Gold. That's what it was. Yeah, Kokanee Gold. That was on tap. Yeah, I remember that. I remember buying packs of that. Um, but I was more into like at that point in my life I was more into hard stuff. Yeah. Like remember, uh, remember uh, Highwood Distillery? Like the Highwood familiar. Distillery they made like a Bailey's clone called Kaylee's. Not familiar. That I remember that being pretty good. That's that's that's. Biggest thing I remember out there, but that and the fact that liquor stores fucking out number convenience stores there, right? But after a few weeks, we should uh, go and do a malt liquor review. I think it'd be funny because mm. because why not? Should do a malt liquor BA one hundred one. Yeah, well that's what I, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Get, I think the only malt liquor I've got here, I could do the um, oh fuck. If I could get it, the Ricky's Catch Twenty Three. The Ricky's Catch Twenty Three. Yeah, or Cold Forty Five. Yeah. Cold Forty Five. Ricky's is still popping up around uh, Elsa Gills around here, and uh, yeah. If you guys okay, do Cold Forty Five. I could actually. I don't know if you really wanted there. I could probably get in on that as well. I mean, <laughs> you can actually get that here. <laughs> Cold Forty Five. See, there's gonna be other malt liquor does, options. Does that still come in cans? <laughs> I don't know. No idea. Not I mean, that it's I've random. Seen. Like the states have got like forty different, fourteen different varieties of malt, cold four forty five or something. Something ridiculous. The guys at the LCBO would look at me weird if I went up to cash with one of those. So I'd be like, "Really? You're buying that? <laughs> Are you feeling okay? Are you, <laughs> you know? all right, man?" Hey, Ricky's Catch Twenty Three Malt Liquor. Where can I get it in my area? Oh, man, they just got a whole bunch in and over west side. <laughs> well, there you go. Oh, yeah. the it's just taking over, man. Oh, west side. Oh, it's sketchy. Yeah, yeah, on the other side of the tracks. Is it down by the uh, by the trailer park? Or? <laughs> <laughs> no, I have to drive past the Moosehead Brewery to get it. Oh, well. Where wonder if you can get that in the States. Well, oh, pretty much anywhere. Who knows? Yeah, it's the actual anywhere. Trailer Park Boys beer. Right? Uh, there's Is that even a thing in the States? Like yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, tra uh, Trailer no, Park Boys. Oh, Trailer Park Boys. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, on Netflix. My sister oh, okay. watching that crap the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what the hell is that? I'd never seen it before then. It's a bunch of crazy <laughs> Canadians. Uh, it's a mess, is what it is. Acting like a bunch of Texans. What the hell's going on? It's <laughs> funny. I go to I go on my my Indian really liquor site. It's a bunch of Canadians acting like Texans. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go I go on the uh, the Indian liquor website here and I click on American Loggers go to malt liquor. The only thing that comes up is Cold Forty Five. Cold Forty Five. That's it, eh? Right. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. there's a thousand. There's a thirteen hundred and twenty-four of them in Wellington Row. Oh, that's uptown. That's near sort of South End where people drink that. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry, drunken one. It's like it's a bunch of Canadians acting like a bunch of Fl Floridians. Right. Floridians. Floridians. Well, I mean, 
<laughs> not saying we're digging don't have towards some... uh, Texans here. Yeah, yeah, not saying that uh, we don't have some some places like that, but that's that's not that's not everybody. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's everybody in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? <laughs> <laughs> But they were mostly known. They're the mostly known for the movies in the U.S. That the TV show was mostly up here, and the movies were the U.S. Oh, actually, yeah. That's why, the, that's why the comedy in the movies changed slightly. Uh, yeah, uh, the movies were more popular, but the thing is, is that it wasn't until I, it was basically uh, the ser- the TV series got popular because the movies got popular here, and. Uh, then pe- people started watching on Netflix. It was basically, you know, after the show ended, by the time we... Well, they started the show it. up again, didn't they? Didn't they yeah, yeah there's been like four seasons of Netflix so far. Yep. And they do, swear net. Yeah, I'm at the original yeah. show when it ended. It used to be on Showtime, they didn't move. No, it was the original, the whole original run, I think, was on Showtime. Yep. And then when they started back up, they... Uh, the first season was done by Mike Clattenburg and whatever his name was, the the original directors. And yeah. After that, they sold the rights to uh, the guys that play uh, Ricky, Julian, and Bubbles, and just they ke- they keep it going, and they have plans to keep it going up until you know whenever you know, like they want to keep doing it until they get old. So mm. as long as you know there's people to watch it, chances are they'll pay it because how much how much of a budget does this show really take right like, yeah. and is it does P do people watch it on netflix yeah i love i love how like they're showing donnie now but they like block out his face <laughs> it looked like it was being in this last season it looked like he was being played by john dunsworth like Leahy. except yeah. for they blocked out his except face he's dead in real life but, oh. yeah Leahy he died uh oh, that's so sad sure make it dark here yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, what was that? No, the original uh, no, 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 original right. voice of da- of Donnie from like the for the original series apparently was the guy that played Bubbles. Like he was screaming. Yeah, like a, it's still it's still the guy that plays Bubbles. They yeah. just block it. They just block what out. What the fuck? He's the best character, literally. So does anybody <laughs> want to tell me where uh, they got their Christmas tree from? I don't know. How would you like to suck my cock? <laughs> <laughs> who are you? Who are you saying Mike Smith's playing? Uh, Donnie. Okay. You know the loudmouth guy. Like whenever they like Ricky throws something, is like, what in the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Jesus Jesus Christ. Christ. My account. Calm the fuck down, Donnie. <laughs> I asked for a lady, not Corey and fucking <laughs> Trevor. Corey and fucking Trevor. <laughs> I want my satellite ten fucking dollars. <laughs> Stop fucking firing. <laughs> I like the uh pilot, the unaired pilot that they had that was like shot in black and white. Oh yeah. And literally Mike Smith's just a sound guy yeah. and uh <laughs> Yeah, he, he was not even as before. Was Bubbles Donnie. didn't really become a character as well the first season. Yeah, yeah, he's literally yeah. He, Donnie he was, was a character. Like, before he was a that. mic operator. That's all he was. <laughs> he's like, what in the fuck? Like, he I'm was fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was. Uh, yeah, he was. I mean, he was friends with the guys, but I don't think he he became. He wasn't um, a character in the series until the, uh, the first season. But did you ever see, like, preceding even the uh, the first whatever episode? Oh, did you yeah. ever see Cart Cart Boy? Yeah, yeah. Like I the, see Cart Boy. Like before the pilot, it's kind of like where the first characters were jo- were, were born. Yeah. And Bubbles is the name Pat of the cat. Which is technically Leahy in the pilot. <laughs> like yeah. the guy that plays Randy's basically Leahy. <laughs> nah. Nickelbrook, uh, Nickelbrook Brewing just tweeted not too long ago, Dear dudes, please stop Dude. saying that our raspberry Uber isn't very manly. Beer has no gender. <laughs> it's just freaking delicious. And I would agree. Well. Someone's, feel- someone's pretty feeling pretty sour, aren't they? Oh, <laughs> Sam. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, you apologize. 
apologize. He forgot to say dude bros, though. It's not just dude. Those dude, are dude bros. Bro. Dude he bro. even lift, bro. Um, Nickelbrook is actually releasing two more flavors of the Uber as part of a regular rotation. Yes, I saw that. I'm excited about that. So am I. And uh, Amy really loves sours, and I just placed an order f- to half hours. Amy, on Amy, really, Amy really likes yelling at you while you're live. Yes, she does. Well, <laughs> she's upstairs right now, but um, wow. Wow. I so somebody muted you. Too. I was really la- li- liking listening to it. I stopped. Yeah, I, sorry, I muted you, but you're getting yelled at. I'm like, yeah, we we're trying to talk here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, sorry, no, no worries. But yeah, I, uh, I just placed an order for half hours on Earth, and I got a few four packs of uh, some of their sours. I've never tried anything from them before. I'm jealous of you right now. Jealous. I'm gonna try and save some. What did What did you end up getting? I don't even know. Yeah, that's a very good question. They don't really have a lot, right? No, well, he's not a very big brewery, right? And you uh, you ordered... Well, he usually posts his stuff Fridays, I think. Thursdays yep. and Fridays. So, if you're on their website right now, I got I, their... Hold on. Hold it. Don't hold your breath, though. Uh, shit. Where's the order? Damn it. I'll get back to you in a second on it. Okay, here we go. I got nothing but flowers. I don't know what that is. Hold on. I should probably bring up their website. Uh, Flowers on Earth. I'm already there. Okay. Okay, so we got... Oh, shit, there's some nice stuff on here. So nothing but flowers is a sour ale with flowers at 4.3%. Yeah, I know. It's like, how vague is that, right? Yeah. I got their Mingus Dew. Okay, you'll really like that. That's a great beer. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's uh, yeah, it, it's just good. I got, uh, so I, I got four of nothing but flowers. got four of the Mingus Dew. I got two of Totally, which is an oak-aged. One. Oh, see now, totally the original. Totally was one of my favorite beers of all time. Okay. So uh, I'm I'm I'd be curious about an oak age, but at the same time, it might take away from it. Okay, fair enough. And they had one can left of Pod Six, so I picked that up. Okay, and right now they have 17 cans of White Dwarf. Okay. Which is a tart wheat ale with uh, chamomile. Yeah. And they have, they have a bottle of Funkland, the original Funkland. 207 bottles, sorry. But, uh, yeah, a really interesting brewery. It's like they, they're only open for like seven hours a week, but it seems like all of their revenue is generated through this website. Well, yeah, at, at first you had to go there to get everything. And, yeah, they're only open like one day for a few hours. Uh, yeah. They're in an old creamery. They're in a small area of an old creamery, so the place smells horrible. Um Awesome guy. He's the guy that did the Beard of Zeus at GLB. Um, oh, okay. Oh, uh, it, was a, it, it was a collab beer. He, yeah. Yeah, he was a home brewer that they collabed with. See, that's awesome. And then he opened this place. Uh, and yeah, as soon as the Canada Post would start doing this for him, this is how he made most of his money. Yeah, and you know what? I'll give him props because their online shopping experience like through a mobile device was super easy. And that is how all the fucking hipster millennials shop nowadays is through their phone. So, well, I can they, tell you, it's not they, super they, easy if you're doing it on your PC. Probably not. Like, it looks a lot, a lot better on uh, on a phone. Hmm. But, but yes. So I got my order in. Hopefully, I can save a few for the bottle show. Yeah, but he'll send nice. it on Monday, and you'll probably get it like Wednesday. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I got that one beer tonight that I'm hoping to bring up to the bottle share. It's something from Hammond River that uh, that wi- that was a whiskey barrel aged uh, Russian Imperial Stout. Oh, is is that the one that you uh, shared on the on the chat? Yeah, that's the one I shared in the chat earlier. Yeah. The Quicksand Jesus Russian Imperial Stout 2017 whiskey barrel aged in Glenora whiskey from Cape Breton. Mm. Sounds really good. Anyway, I th- I'm gonna I'm gonna head out for the night. I gotta be up. It's like eight o'clock in the morning. So. Alrighty, sir. You have a good night. Right, okay, thanks. Nice. For- no, no problem. Uh, I'll see you guys later. And thanks for having me on, Chad.
No, thank you for coming out. Cheers, cheers. Hey. Cheers. See you. This smells horrible. Yeah. Yeah, duct tape has a really odd, terrible smell to it. <laughs> My dogs are scared of it. <laughs> I would be too. It has a very astringent smell to it. I am going to post the join link over here in the chat if anyone's still in over here. Come on and join us. Uh, we are going to go offline, but I'm not going to beg just yet. But I'm going to go offline. So there's the join link. Come say hello. Bye-bye. Uh,